Like life on the life on the road for like a, a fledgling rock and roll band is not glamorous at all. You know, it's a it's a dog fight. It's a lot of floors and couches involved. A lot of chiropractic need afterwards. <laughs> I'm Josh. We're one, two, three. Both me and Josh were big fans of punk music back in high school. We kind of parted ways uh, for about five years or something like that, and then kind of simultaneously both continued on a similar path of listening to similar music. Five years later, we ended up in a band together. Yeah, I, uh, I didn't even know how to play drums at all when we first started a band. I had like glorified like buckets for drums, basically, and. Uh, we had this like really like trashy like garage blues band and like he could barely sing and like but you know we just we started playing uh, we've been in, like three or four bands together that was probably about ten years ago but yeah pretty much it when I got into music that was like the downfall of my life as like a normal citizen yeah music ruined my life yeah me and Josh were in a band called the Takeover UK Worst man. for about five years and um, we just hustled our asses off and. and and it never really amounted to much. And we had about every music industry nightmare happen to us, you can imagine. It's like Spinal Tap, man. Yeah, it, it was really straight was. up Spinal Tap. We had our album held hostage by the producer because we didn't pay him enough. Our record label dropped us two months after our album came out. They, after, they held, after they didn't put it out, it was done and they waited two years to put it out. And then they dropped us two months after it came out. Yeah, so I, I just, I couldn't deal with that anymore. I told Josh I was gonna quit. And, and he said, well, if you quit, I'm gonna quit too. So we both quit and started this, and about a year later, we got a record deal. And it's like, a, the name is like so simple, like a, like a baby could say it, but it's like, also like, it's like ambiguous. Like, uh, I, I guess when you hear the name, you don't really draw any conclusions. Like sometimes when you hear a band, like all those love bands, you know, something was done and you're kind of like, oh, well. Yeah, I didn't want any preconceptions about what we sounded like or, or what kind of band we were. With a name like One, Two, Three, you have absolutely no idea what you're getting. I, I like all sorts of music, and I get inspired to write all, all sorts of music. Yeah, our album's basically like a mixtape, man. It, it really is kind of like genre hopping, which I think if that's, if the people are gonna criticize, I'm pretty sure that's what they're gonna say about it. But I mean, I think that we've done it in a way where like his vocals kind of tie it all together, like with the, he has a kind of a, you know, he sings a certain way, you know, with falsettos, and like there's like a current that runs through it with like, even though the songs can be experimental and stuff like that, there's always a, a strong melody that kind of runs through it, and we kind of still, we still have that like penchant for like pop music like in our souls. So like our songs are always gonna have like, you know, an identifiable chorus. Well, that's my our album is called New Heaven. We recorded it at uh, Rare Book Room Studios with this guy Nicholas Varens, who's a really, really cool producer. We yeah. basically went into the recording process with. 10 songs we knew we were gonna record. There weren't really any B-sides. We had been working on these for years, and you know, we just wanted to keep the possibilities endless, and, and Nicholas allowed us to do that. Sometimes still, I, you know, we've had it for like, since December, and I'll throw it on like every, every once in a while. I'm kinda of sick of it at this point, but I'll throw it on and be like, damn, like he did a fucking great job. America's coming around. I mean, obviously with the Grammys, Arcade Fire winning Best Album, it's starting to come around, but UK has kind of always been there. And uh, 
it just kind of made sense that, that they would latch on to it first. The, the states are so big, and there's so many different types of music to choose from. So the problem with like Amer like America and like the American music industry is like, oh, like an A and R guy from a label can be like, I fucking love your band, man. I love you. Like you know, like you come out to every one of your shows and like you talk to him, like, I can't do anything for you right now though. And it's just like, you love our band, like you love our songs, you think we're good live. And it's just like they have their, their hands are just tied because all these like all the people higher up like unless like they want you to have already done something on your own. Well, it's like it's kind of like a catch twenty two. It's like well, how do I get buzz going if I don't have any like backing behind me? And in the UK, they're more like, hey, you're awesome. No one knows about you. That's great because I want you for myself. So like let's scoop you up. Like you know that's kind of more. They're still like looking for new talent and like the fact that like our single. Uh, was played on like a regular rotation on Radio One. It's like that would never ever happen in America. Lately there's no one with rights I want. Uh, we're one, two, three, and check out our show on Babel Music. Stop.